For a couple of days, I was lucky enough to visit Tokyo in Japan for the first time with my family. And Japan being the birthplace of many technology companies, technology is a big part of the place and it's just so different to what I'm used to in Australia. And just a heads up, please excuse my pronunciation of any Japanese places with my Australian accent. Tokyo is a massive city with so many people everywhere and so many shops everywhere, but majority of the electronics is all centered in one place, Akihabara. It's a really easy to reach place with a train station there and would probably only take a short train trip from wherever in Tokyo. And coming out of the station, it doesn't matter if you go left or right, there's colorful stores everywhere. So first stop is Softmap. From the outside, it doesn't look like much, but amazingly there's seven floors full of things and this is the thing for all the stores here, they're just deceivingly massive. There's not much space on the ground so they just build up so often the stores will have like 7 or more floors to them filled with people. So here's the mechanical keyboard area and you would just never see anything like this in most countries like Australia and it isn't a surprise that they're stocked up on the Japanese big guns with the Topre Real Forces, the HHKBs and Vilcos but also the Korean Leopolds. They have a bunch of different real forces which are cheaper than what I can get in Australia but I'm not sure about other countries. There's different layouts and legends and also some high pros which is the first time I felt one. This 65% keyboard with the typewriter keycap seems to be everywhere and it looks and feels just like the Magic 4 68. This 60% keyboard from Century is another one that I haven't seen before and is pretty cool since it uses different key switches in different rows so you can get a taste of everything. But the layout was also interesting since they crammed in the directional arrow keys. Uh, the build was okay but the keycaps felt quite cheap and were just thin ABS and they were quite shiny as well and I'd imagine they wouldn't be the easiest board to replace the keycaps with. And this one also came in tactile grey, which again, we've never really seen in person. Also tucked below were a few Matthias keyboards just casually lying there with the quiet click switches. There's tons of Vilco boards here with Bluetooth ones as well, with the Manila and the 10 keyless Magistouch keyboards. There's pretty much all the flavors there, so you can pick what you want. There wasn't much of Ducky with just the Ducky Mini, so no Ducky Shines and all that. Mixed in there was also the HHKB Pro Lite 2, which isn't an electrocapacitive or mechanical keyboard, but probably wouldn't be an issue for anyone looking here, hopefully. But there's also the mainstream mechanical keyboards from Razer, Logitech, SteelSeries and all those other brands, but they're in their own sections and booths. Another nice touch is that there's key switch testers at most of these stores. Next up was Sukumo. This is a smaller shop but still has a couple of levels. My battery was running really low here so I didn't get too much footage but they still have some awesome stuff again with the big Japanese brands. Here's the beastly new Topre Real Force IGB keyboard. I do prefer the classic looking Real Forces and it would have been interesting to see them just implement the RGB lighting into those but whatever. And they also have different Real Forces and their HHKBs and just look at those HHKBs stacked up there. There's also the nice Mistal split keyboard, but it's pretty expensive. The wood rest for a 10 keyless keyboard is decent for around 20 US, but they also had a few accessories like spare keycaps, uh, Y keycap pullers and other little things. And I didn't really look at this in person, but from this picture, it kind of looks like they were selling artisan keycaps as well. This Arcus Retro Tiny Keyboard caught my attention since it has the same layout as the popular Leopold 65% keyboards. And I have seen it online before and read something about it being related to the Leopold boards. The full size Arcus keyboards also came in the Cherry MX Silent Switch which has a pinkish stem and it was the first time I actually got to try it out and I've come to that point where anything new feels good to me and I thought they just felt quite amazing to me. And I actually wish I bought one since it's one of the cheaper boards there. It's unfortunate that the Arcus Retro Tiny didn't seem to come in the Switch because that would have been a really easy buy for me. And there was also an Arcus TKL keyboard. And then after that I went to the massive and famous Yorobashi Camera. This is the main electronics store in the area and again has like 8 or 9 floors. And these floors are huge, I'd consider just one floor to be pretty big for a store. 
Again, the mainstream brands have their own sections with their other gaming products. And just like the others, the main section is packed with real forces and filkos. This is the first time I saw these Fujitsu Libertouch keyboards, but too bad they weren't on display to try, but I did get to read a bit about them, and they seem to be an interesting keyboard that isn't mechanical or electro-capacitive. And they're not as expensive as the real forces being at 15k yen. I ended up just buying the Arcus Retro Tiny here because I can't get my hands on it back home, it comes in a Japanese layout and an English one, so you have to check the sides, which isn't in English, so you have to just match up the lettering. They had the Century Black Pawn 60% with different key switches, and the Black Bishop keyboard as well. And they also had the Mistal Barocco Split keyboard. Yodobashi was a bit more expensive, but they did have a few other keyboards there, and heaps of stuff, and it was just cool seeing all those different types of real forces. There was also just a couple of accessories. And lastly, I went to Bit Camera. There's a couple of Bit Cameras spread around Tokyo, and I've read good things about the one in Shinjuku, but that was a tad far from where I was, so I went to the one in Yurikucho, which is next to the high-end shopping district of Ginza, which I was close to. These guys pretty much had more of the same at similar prices. They did, however, have this typewriter mechanical keyboard, which looked like a quirky writer, but I didn't flip it over, but it had kale blue key switches. There was an older Ducky Shine 4 still there, and some Ducky Minis, so there wasn't much of Ducky to be seen from my experience in Japan. But for the Filcos, they had these cards which you just hand into the register instead of having the boxes there. I also went to a smaller bit camera in Shibuya, and they didn't have mechanical keyboards except for a few Logitech ones, so not all of them have them, so probably only the bigger branches do. Another thing with all these stores and many other stores is that there's discounts for if you're a traveler and if you pay with like a visa card and stuff. So check out the links for more on that. So overall, it was awesome to just be able to see mechanical keyboards just out on display like that, especially the high-end ones. It's just unseen over here in Australia where a shop might have a Razer or Logitech out on display. And the Japanese keyboards are cheaper in Japan, but I think like the other ones, they're still pretty expensive. But they have their own unique ones as well, which will pretty much be exclusive there. For all the other stuff, Amazon Japan does have some, so that's another potential option when you're there, but it's not as fun. The most prevalent brand there was Filco, I think. Each store had so much stock of these guys, but it's understandable since it's a Japanese company. But also Arcus, which I never really heard of before, is quite big there, offering 65%, 10 keyless and full-size keyboards in all different switches, including the Cherry MX Silent Switch. Sentry was also another common one there. Another store that I read about was Arc, but unfortunately I didn't have the time to go there, but others have, and I'll link that in the description. If you want to read and learn about all this as well, I got all my info off the Mechanical Keyboard subreddit where there's a Japan shopping guide and also other threads with helpful comments. As said before, I bought the Progress Touch Retro Tiny, so expect a review of that soon. <laughs>